somebody said get a Toyota Tundra and a 16 foot trailer and Home Depot straps and you're in. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. So what's up? What up, what up, what up? Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome to episode two of Are We Trekking or Not, Baby? <laughs> hey guys, good morning. I just woke up. It's like 7.45 right now. Um, I'm currently parked at a Petro in Columbia, South Carolina. We're actually about to go right across the street to Love's. I gotta get a PM. And I gotta brush my teeth and all that stuff. I'm not gonna pay for a shower over here. I don't have the um, Ultra One card for TA and Petro, but I got love. So we're gonna go right across the street over there, get this PM out the way, and then um, yeah. But today, today's video, not really a vlog. We're not really doing too much today. But today's video is for my people who want to get into car hauling. This is for you, baby, because a lot of people ask me, how do I get into it? How do I do it? What, what, what can I do? This is for you. So stay tuned. Bring me out the plastic. I've been feeling brand new. <laughs> y'all, that was, that was so corny. Oh my God. Okay. Y'all, okay, okay. I'm um, about to do my preacher real quick. And then we got to get some fuel. And then we're going to get right into the video for y'all. Okay. I got her pumping. She got, she fellas, that's what you do. All right, you make sure your wife pump that, pump that. <laughs> I'm playing. Wow. We're actually about to go park over there. I gotta do some blind backing. Chill, buddy. She's showing her painting. She's shaking like jelly. Honey, bags of Chanel. -y. Oh, shit. No, put that back in. I tried to blind back yesterday at that pet trailer and it did not. Oh shit, my trailer. And it did. It was a little tight. I'm not really a fan of blind backing. But uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Where you going? Oh, he going that way. Can y'all see him? Let me show y'all. Him back it up. Go ahead on um, Big P. Big Peter? Now let's see if I can do the same thing, okay? <laughs>
Rose account. I got my Rose card. of 
being responsible for cargo, strapping down cargo, making sure your cargo is secure, and driving it down the road. And if you don't know, I started off a flatbed. Um, I rarely ever pulled a van. I pulled a van for like two weeks. So I started off a flatbed, pulled a van for two weeks, and when it's a car hauling. So there's that. Definitely get your experience with hauling cargo and definitely get your experience with a tractor trailer, okay? Now, if you do have those things or you don't care what I just said and you still want to hop right into car hauling, find you a company that will train you. Um, I know I joined Carvana at six months. All you need is six months experience with Carvana and they will train you and then once you get your experience, you can go somewhere else. A lot of these a lot of the good car hauling companies want you to have two years experience or at least one year experience hauling cars so two years driving and at least one year hauling cars that's typically what it is but if you could find you a uh, car hauling company that will train you straight out of CBO school definitely do your research I'll try to drop if I can I can do my research and try to help y'all and drop them down below in the description box so I will do my part, and if you don't see nothing, then I didn't find it. But um, I think Jack Cooper is one. I'm not entirely sure. I know a lot of it is in the comments on Facebook. So definitely do your research. Find you a company that will train you with little to no experience. But I highly recommend you at least get two years in a row before you try to call cards. Okay? So that's my advice. That's my advice. I'm going to read you other call haulers advice and then I'm going to throw in some razzle dazzle other advice not pertaining to trying to get in school, okay? Somebody said get a Toyota Tundra and a 16 foot trailer and Home Depot straps and you're in. Don't do that. <laughs> we got that down track. Well guys, you, you heard it. You've heard it. Okay, a lot of these drivers are recommending you get your experience. So I would not recommend as soon as you get out of CDO school that you get into car hauling. But if that is something you want to do, I will uh, link the some, some of the companies that they've named down below. And you can do your research and just make that decision. But some things, okay. Now let's talk about some things to know before you get into car hauling. This is from my experience, okay. My experience. And if any of you drivers have other experience you want to share drop them down below okay but for one number one for me when i first started learning how to haul cars the truck straight up the truck it maneuvers different the trailer pivots different your fifth wheel is on the ground uh, you have to definitely watch the trailer back there now one thing i learned i don't have to turn out as wide even though i'm longer we are 80 feet we're not you know the 53 foot trailer so learning to turn will be your biggest adjustment but it's not hard the trailer like i said it all pivots perfect you don't have to turn out as wide all the time so that's one thing i had to learn also you cannot do a 90 in these trucks and if you don't know what a 90 is they're basically jackknifing your trailer and if you even come try if you even do I don't know, it's it's crazy. If you even try and jackknife your trailer and you're loaded, you're gonna mess up some cars. Um, turning space is fun. I'm gonna use that word because depending how you load your trailer and depending how you load your truck and your trailer, that determines how much turning space you have. Okay, so typically you want to have at least 18 inches from those two cars. When you get into car hall, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, I'm gonna try and put up a picture up here if I can find one. But from the car that's in your number two position and the car in your number four position, and then your car in your number seven position, and then the tractor, you want at least 18 inches of uh, room. Um, a lot of people say if you can put your forearm between the two cars, you should be good. Just make sure you make wide turns thing is if you if your your cars are this close and you make a turn they're gonna crunch or if your car is 18 inches but you have to make a tight turn you're gonna crunch it really depends how you load your truck okay how you load your truck determines your turning room your turning space and I can't really explain it more
more than more than what I can right now. Just know when you get into it, you will know what I'm talking about, okay? Height. Let's talk about height. I know when um, when we all learn how to drive a tractor trailer, they say don't go under a bridge. It's uh, lower than 13.6. Our clearance is 13.6, right? Carvana, which is why I wouldn't really, really recommend Carvana anymore. Carvana, they won't let you leave the yard if you're over 13.6. At least from when I was working there. But once you really start hauling these big boy cars, if you, you're gonna, you're gonna run, once you start hauling these big boy cars, you're gonna run over 13.6. I remember I ran about 14.4. Tripland. Tripland is a big thing. Um, once you get into car hauling, you definitely need to know your bridge heights on your trip. Don't make the wrong turns on your trip if you are over 14 to, okay, honestly. But it really depends where you are. If you're in the Northeast, I wouldn't go over 13, 10. 13 feet, 10 inches. These are the numbers I'm saying. Height always measure your load if you don't measure your load and you go somewhere that you weren't supposed to go you, you are screwed okay if you, yeah mm -hmm. if you are 13 10 and you're trying to go under a 13 8 bridge you're not gonna make it sweetie you're gonna make you know what you're gonna do you know what you're gonna do with those cars you're gonna make man-made convertibles because you're gonna peel the roof all the way back you're gonna peel that muffin cap back baby and you don't want to do that because you just that's just a headache i've never done that and i hope i will never have to do that i hope i never be in a position to do that because that will be very embarrassing okay also i know a lot of people are like um how can you see out of your windshield you got a pickup truck over your head da -da -da -da. i can't do that yes you can you'll get used to it it's really not that big of a difference now sometimes you can't see stoplights that's when you pay attention to your hood. Your hood will always have the stoplight reflected onto it. And if you don't, pay attention to the cars next to you. If they take off, you take off. And hopefully they don't run a red light. <laughs> okay? <laughs> now if you do have your, you know, your over the road experience, you should be used to tight uh, shippers and consignees. Dealerships are literally the same for the most part. You know, you do your standard pre-trip, you Google Maps the location, and you see how tight it is. You call them, make sure um, you ask for directions on how to get in there because some of these dealerships are super tight. And I just, yeah, some of them, I hate them. They're a headache. And some of them are so easy. Some of them actually have a space for you to park and do a U-turn. Some of them have off lots. So it's always important for you to pre-trip and call in advance. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking of stuff over the top of my head. Um, our fifth wheel do, does sit um, lower. With that being said, if you come into like truck stops that have humps and things like that, you will get stuck. I've gotten my fifth wheel stuck on a few things and luckily I was able to get out. Um, by the grace of God, I was able to get out. I got stuck like three times and I got myself out. That's not fun, not at all, not fun at all. So don't do that. Um, that's pretty much it or all that I can think of. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. But if you don't listen to anybody else, please listen to me. Do not get into car hauling straight out of CPL school. I do not recommend it. But hey, prove me wrong, baby. If you do and, you, and you're phenomenal, let me know. So I can, you know, you know, just, you know, brag about you. Like, yeah, girl. Yeah, dude. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that thing. Go, go, do, go ahead and do your thing, baby. <laughs> So if you're scared of heights, don't do it. I wasn't really scared of heights until I started driving, until I started getting to car hauling. Because up here, up at the very top, had me. I was, y'all, I was crying. I was crying because I was at, when I was at Carvana, they had me walk from up here all the way down on on the skinny uh, on the skinny uh, ramps. I was about to pass out. Mm -mm. But as time goes by, you'll get used to it. I'm not trying to scare you. If heights aren't your problem, then kudos. I want to be like you when I grow up. 
But yeah, I, I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> but I'm still getting used to it. I still get scared up there. So, um, that's just me. That's the only thing I really get scared about. Everything else is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Girl, only isn't easy. It's just routine. Always have a routine. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope I covered everything I could cover. I feel like I skipped a lot of things. But, like I said, if you have any questions, just drop them down below. And, um, yeah. Episode 2 of Are We Chucking or Not, baby? Let's get into it. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far if you've been watching. And if you come, if you watch all the way to the end, let me know how you're doing today. Let me know any questions you have, anything you want to see. And that's all for today's video, y'all. I'll catch you in my next